my actually an alum of Public High School. Graduated from Public High School, so go Knights. <laughs> I'm also an alum of Westfield State, so what perfect combination can that be, right? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your interest in Westfield State University. Uh, and, you know, kind of recognizing that this is kind of a monumental step in your educational career, trying to identify what particular path you'd like to take, uh, whether it's two year, whether it's four year, whether it's the technical training area. Um, I'm here to provide you information. Uh, my role here is to provide you as much information as possible about Westwood State, academic programs, student life. Um, so I'll just give a brief overview of Westwood State University, uh, and then I'll open it up to you for any questions about the application process or any general questions about academic offerings. Uh, so kind of a brief overview of First of all, I would like to ask, uh, how many of you have been on campus? How many of you are familiar with our Westwood State University campus? Okay, awesome. And that includes campus tour in full session, um, a general, just a campus tour, because we have two sessions where we conduct an, an informational session and campus tour and just a campus tour in the morning. Uh, and our open house, we have, uh, we just had our first one back on uh, September 28th, and we'll be having our next one on October uh, 19th next Saturday and then November 16th. Um, so those are the two additional opportunities to learn more about Westfield State, uh, get to meet faculty, staff, current students, learn more about your academic major as well. And talk to current students, right? Uh, what better way can you get more information uh, from a student who's going through the experience uh, as, as part of the process? So uh, we'll have the ability for students to uh, speak directly with faculty, students, and ask those tough questions about you know, what is it like to be a Westfield State student? And also gives you the opportunity to ponder upon the question of whether Westfield State University is a good fit for you. Um, so that's, that's the most important step in this process. Uh, so just kind of a brief overview in terms of um, undergraduate programs, campus life, academic offerings. Uh, Westfield State is a four-year public comprehensive liberal arts institution. Uh, that sounds like a mouthful. All that simply means is that the highest degree that you'll earn at Westfield State University is your bachelor's degree. Um, and the public component just simply means that we are a public state university, so we're part of the Massachusetts State University. And the comprehensive liberal arts has a strong emphasis um, in making sure that our students are well-rounded within the liberal arts. So that's part of the general education requirements. Um, so it's very similar to high school where you have to take your four years of English, right? Four years of math. Um, at West Hill State, we make sure that our students um, have the opportunity to take courses in the global awareness section um, of our requirements, philosophy, science, uh, English, uh, and the sciences. Uh, so that's what that simply means. Uh, we currently have just under 5,000 undergraduate students, so for those of you who are looking for a medium-sized environment, uh, that's us, that's West Hill. Um, and it, it's, I, I think it's a good combination of both. It's not so small that you know everyone on campus, but it's not so large and overwhelming to our students. It's a perfect balance between both um, aspects. Um, we are geographically located in Westfield, Massachusetts, so literally on the foothills of the Berkshires. Um, so for any of you who are interested in the sciences, like environmental science, I was an environmental science major for two semesters before I, I, I shifted directions, but um, environmental science, biology, and chemistry makes it a very unique experience because our campus surrounds so many natural resources. Um, and in terms of our campus size, 256 acres. So relatively small. Um, our largest kind of furthest away uh, facility on campus is the Horace Mann Center. So unless you're a criminal justice major, uh, really that building just houses, um, you know, the paperwork, right? Student accounts, financial aid, admissions, office of the president, uh, human resources. Um, but we also have campus shuttles that makes uh, their rotations. Um, so we have the campus shuttle and we also have the PVTA, the Pania Valley Transit Authority, um, that provides tra transportation for our students. So there's ways to get to campus um, and uh, get connected to other locations in terms of transportation or public transportation. Um, in terms of our undergraduate majors, top five majors that Westfield is well known for, um, our most popular major is criminal justice. Anyone interested in criminal justice? Awesome. Which particular subfield interests within criminal justice? Thinking about more criminology, detective bureau, corrections, law enforcement, yeah. crime scene investigation. So a lot of our students um, do the dual major in criminal justice and chemistry. Um, we currently have one of our tour guides who's doing that particular track, um, and she's exploring uh, graduate programs in, in that particular area. 
area. So criminal justice is very broad. It's very similar to psychology where there's so many different subfields that you can pursue. Um, and we provide the opportunity for students to really develop those interests as a first year student uh, to really start kind of identifying which particular subfield interests you have. Um, and by providing our students with a comprehensive liberal arts foundation, um, that really prepares our students to generate their interests as, as they're um, throughout their four years at Washington State. Um, that was me. I changed my major four times. So <laughs> trying to understand which particular pathway to take. Um, I was originally an environmental science major. I changed to chemistry, biology. Ended up with history and political science on the opposite spectrum of, of, of the sciences or the social science. Um, so, you know, we, we have a robust academic advising program, uh, which is really centered upon the Westwood State experience, um, which is really designed for our students to um, first years, highly structured, so our first year students are introduced, are in first year classes only. We have faculty who, uh, who have the training to work specifically with our first year students in that transition from high school to college. We have the first year convocation, uh, which is an introduction to our campus. Um, our college deans also makes um, introductions with regards to what their colleges um, have to offer in terms of internships, academic offerings, um, opportunities to study abroad. Um, so it's really introducing our students to our campus and becoming well acclimated um, at Westfield. The second year is year reflection. So for those of you who are unsure about pursuing a particular major, um, let's say you're undeclared or what we like to say exploratory, you'll be assigned with an academic advisor um, who specializes in working with our students who are undeclared. Um, so that's really the year that our students start to reflect and look at what courses you've taken up to that point um, in order to assist you in that process. The third year is high impact practices. How many of you are thinking about studying abroad? Whether it's a semester, short term, two weeks? Yeah, awesome. So that's the year which we em emphasize those activities um, as part of the Westwood State experience. We want to make sure that our students kind of get out of your comfort zone, right? Uh, explore uh, and really uh, try to immerse yourself in understanding uh, diversity, cultural awareness. So that's really the, the essence of the study abroad programs. Internships, it's another opportunity to, to really determine whether that major that you are currently enrolled in is really the field that you'd like to pursue. What better way to determine that through, through an internship, which is the, the real world experience in that particular field. And you might not like your internship. That's the whole objective, right? We want to make sure that our students are exposed to that particular field to determine and, and really ponder upon the question of uh, whether you'd like to continue to pursue um, that career track. The, le the, the fourth year, we call it the last mile. It's really the next step in your journey. Um, so this is when our students are really wrapping up their undergraduate research. Um, a lot of our students present at the UMass undergraduate research in Amherst. Um, every year we have a large group of West Hill State University upperclassmen who present at that conference. We, we host our own one through our Center for Undergraduate Research and Creativity. Uh, so it includes all academic and the performing fine arts. Um, so those are some of the that's really what culminates the essence of what we say the West Coast State experience. It's really um, a roadmap for success for all of our undergraduate students. Um, in terms of housing, how many of you are thinking about living on campus? Awesome. We are the most residential state university in Massachusetts. So 65 to 70 percent of our undergraduate students of under 5,000, we have just 4,800, 4,900 students, full-time day division. Uh, who live on campus. So we have a robust student activities office. Uh, we have a robust intramural office. Uh, so if you're thinking about playing non-competitive sports, uh, we have an excellent program available for all of our students. Anything from Quidditch to Ultimate Frisbee <laughs> to three-on-three -three basketball. <laughs> so interesting opportunities for our students um, through our office. Um, and, uh, and that's one of the things that we always like to emphasize. We want all of our students to immerse themselves in the West Coast State experience. Um, so becoming involved with a non-competitive sport, cultural heritage group on campus is essential to making those really unique partnerships with our campus. Um, so joining, uh, uh, you know, our 70 different club sports and organizations is really the way in which all of our students connect with each other um, and also uh, become engaged and 
raise any issues or concerns to our student government association, which is the largest out of the state university. So that gives you a good sense in terms of how powerful the student voice is on campus with regards to any student life issues. Uh, so that's another opportunity that our students um, have becoming involved with our student government association. Yeah, so <laughs> I think um, many of you have questions about the application deadline, application process, academic offerings. So I want to open it up to you and hopefully we'll be able to cover different areas. And if I'm missing something, please make sure that uh, you ask a question, that way we can cover that particular area. Sure. So mine's more for towards internships. So I know yes. for education practicums are split up differently. How sure. do you split those up? Yes. Yeah, so I know you take them throughout your all four years. So correct. I'm just wondering how you Yes. So, and as part of your undergraduate experience within the, any particular education concentration that you pursue, whether it's early childhood education, pre k to two, elementary one through six, secondary, middle and secondary licensure programs, um, we try to make sure that um, in terms of the practicum in classroom hours, uh, that we have basically worked very closely with the Westfield Public Schools, surrounding school districts as well, um, to closely align the particular practical experience for our students in the education department with their related interests, right? So if you're thinking about elementary education, for example, we'll make sure that we'll partner our students um, in, a, in, in a school setting that works specifically with that population. And the same applies for special education. And as you're going through our education program, you'll be prepared to take your MTELs. So we prepare, we have an MTEL commula preparation uh, through our Benacle Center, which um, which provides assistance for all of our students uh, throughout the examination process. So you'll leave Westfield with one MTEL credential. Um, and then related to your particular subfield interest, you'll also receive assistance through that process. We have comprehensive wraparound services for all our education students. Um, we have teacher in residence. So having a teacher in residence really provides students with the ability to have a conversation and dialogue about the experience um, in the education. Um, last year we had a, a veteran teacher, 20 plus years of experience in working with, um, working in, in education, the education setting, um, and that just enhances the, the quality of the education for a lot of our students. Just having someone who currently practices within that field is, is certainly crucial, and, um, and, and really understanding what the field entails. So you'll, have, you'll be working very closely with your academic advisor, or faculty advisor actually, which is very um, unique to all of our students in your major. So if you're an education major, elementary education, for example, you'll have a faculty advisor who specializes in that area. So it's really an enhanced uh, way to kind of focus on the advising service aspect of it. Yes? Um, do you help the students like with all fields finding their internships? Or yes. Do find yeah, so we, um, through our, so one of our well-known internship programs is the Washington Center, uh, which is housed in Washington, D.C. Um, and they have internship opportunities for all majors. A lot of our students pursue that opportunity. They get to spend an entire summer in Washington, D.C. Um, and they actually partner students in their respective fields. So if you're a history major, uh, there's one opportunity uh, for our students um, to intern at the Natural Museum of History. Uh, for criminal justice students, um, we've had students secure very competitive internships. Uh, with the CIA, the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, um, the FBI. So high profile, very competitive internships that are available to our students, and as well as all other majors. They really have a comprehensive program for, for in, in with respect to internships. So regardless of which major, um, you'll, be, uh, you'll have the opportunity to really identify which particular internship experience best aligns and best matches your academic goals and your career objectives. Um, as an undergraduate student. Another popular one is the Disney internship program. <laughs> Why not intern with, Dis with Mickey Mouse and learn about one of the world's largest um, you know, organization? Um, and it's really an opportunity for our students to de develop leadership skills, public speaking skills. You earn up to 15 college level credits, so you come back to us with 15 credits, um, a full semester of coursework. Um, and we have all areas. Uh, we had students in you know, our criminal justice department complete internship with the security facet of, of Walt Disney, uh, and other areas as well uh, within the parks. So, and then our career center too. I forgot to mention our career center. Our career center also works very closely with our students. Uh, for employment, we have Handshake. We utilize Handshake, which is one of the platforms uh, that our 
students utilize to identify employment opportunities. And it's very similar with our internship um, opportunities through our Career Center. Um, through your student portal, you'll have access to thousands of internships. And the same would apply for international study abroad programs. We have an entire office dedicated for international study abroad programs, which include international study abroad programs and short-term study abroad programs. So for our students in highly structured majors like education, nursing, um, we have one opportunity in Puerto Rico, which is a language immersion course for education majors. Psychology students, there's one in Bolivia. Um, nursing in Guatemala, those are two weeks long, so you, you'll get the opportunity to travel if you're in a highly structured major. <laughs> Is there anything like that for journalism? Journalism, so one of our most popular one is through the Washington Center. Actually, one of our um, admission counselors did an internship in Boston, uh, and she was a communication major with uh, journalism concentration. Um, so she worked very closely with um, a media group um, in terms of that process, uh, in terms of her experience. So for any particular subfield, um, there's so many different opportunities that you can pursue in terms of um, internships. Study abroad, you can study abroad as, as early as your first semester. Uh, I mentioned those short-term study abroad programs. Um, some are specific to majors, like I mentioned education, psychology, nursing. Uh, so those are only available for students within those majors, but there are other opportunities, like our most popular one, which is in Nicaragua, which is our service learning trip. We've had a partnership with a community-based organization for over 10 years. And um, our students have built schools. They've also provided resources um, in collaboration with the community-based organization, and really kind of um, had the opportunity to learn a foreign language, to also immerse themselves in, in a different culture. So um, those are some of the opportunities available for all students. If you're, if you're an environmental science major, this is a great opportunity. Highly encourage it. Uh, we have a short-term study abroad program that focuses on environmental tropical ecology experience in Costa Rica. Uh, so it's, it's a great opportunity if you're thinking about environmental science, biology, um, open to all students as well. Um, so great way to explore, and they're very affordable to be honest with you. Uh, so that's uh, one of the selling points. The two weeks uh, provide a reduced uh, cost for that experience as well. And there's also financial aid. So you can always utilize financial aid to cover the costs of your study abroad um, experience. Your um, exchange experience as well. Any other questions about Westfield State, the application process? I think we're good on time, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you are seniors? Everyone is a senior, correct? Okay, awesome. How many of you are looking to stay in state? Within Massachusetts? <laughs> Take your vote. Okay. It's all, it's, all, it's all part of the process, you know. One of the things that my, my recommendation is always to visit the schools if you're thinking about going out of state, right? You want to visit the school and determine, again, kind of going back to whether that particular institution that you visit is a good fit for you. Um, so visiting the campus is essential. Like I always say, visit Westfield State uh, and really talk to current students, faculty, staff, us in the admission office, um, and really determine whether, you know, kind of, it's almost like conducting your research, right, as you go through this process. So you're informed. Um, so once you get an admission decision letter from Westfield State, um, you're 100% sure that Westfield State is a good fit for you, um, and that's what I want to see. I want to make sure that you, uh, you know, that you, that you find yourself immersed in Westfield, um, and also know exactly that Westfield State University for the next four years of your educational career path is is the right choice for you. So visit our campus, open house, highly encourage it. Um, so register, you can register right online. Our application is online. No common app, uh, very user-friendly process. You can complete it in 17 and a half minutes. <laughs> I timed myself. Uh, so it's rather user-friendly to get through it. Um, essay, letters of recommendation, resume list of activities are optional items as part of the application. However, if you're applying for those top five majors, criminal justice, education, business management, psychology and communication, I encourage you to submit those items. It gives us the opportunity to kind of delve into those areas. Um, in the case that we see, let's say, an inconsistency within your first year academic performance and your second year, it's always a good qualitative aspect of the application that I always like to include, right? I don't, I, one of the things that I do not enjoy is just looking at an SAT score and a GPA. It really doesn't determine, it doesn't reflect the ability of the student, right? So I always like to get a backstory. Just, you know, we're human, right? Things happen. Mm -hmm. 
circumstances come up. Um, and I understand that as part of the process. So any information, letters of recommendation from your guidance counselor, your coach, um, your teacher, your social studies teacher, your history teacher. Is Mr. Donahue still here? Yes. yes. He was my history teacher. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, any, any areas that you can really obtain any qualitative aspects of the application process is beneficial and does make a difference in the admission decision process, I'll tell you that. Um, especially for those top five ma majors and my nursing applicants. Yeah. Awesome. Great. <laughs> Well, thank you again, everyone, for your interest in Westfield State. Um, I wish you nothing but the best in this academic year. Um, I have contact information, so if you'd like to, uh, if you have any questions as you go through this process, um, don't hesitate to send me an email. Um, and again, it's something I do track as part of the admission process, demonstrated interest. So don't hesitate to send me an email if you have any questions, if you'd just like to follow up on the status of your application. November 15th, early action. March 1st, general application deadline, unless you're applying for um, nursing, which is February 1st, our urban education program or first generation college student program, February 1st, and our learning disabilities program has a deadline on February 1st.